Hi everyone, this is Matt to show and intro stats and today we're looking at using software to uh, calculate some of the statistics associated with one population mean and one population proportion hypothesis tests. So we've done two videos now uh, kind of a, walking through an example of doing a one population mean hypothesis test and a one population proportion hypothesis test and today I just wanted to show you um, how you could get some of those numbers calculated for you. Um, and we're going to be using StatCato and StatKey. But before we go to those, we actually need to get um, our uh, data. Um, you can actually go to my website. Um, my, my book is on, my website, on the website. So my website is matt-toshow.org. And if you're taking a statistics class, you can, you can click statistics right here. Um, again, the, the chapters of the book you can find on sections of the book and problem sets from the book or on each of the, of the main chapters where it says free statistics books is a download of the entire book. So if you um, want to look at that, that statistics book. Um, and then um, under data sets right here you can get data sets that I use in the book and in my statistics classes. So um, the, the, the two examples we looked in a uh, one population mean and one population proportion hypothesis test came from the fall 2015 survey data. It's this one right here that says Math 140 fall 2015 survey data. This was a census of Math 140 statistics students uh, in the fall 2015 semester. So this is the one that um, we'll be using this data uh, when we count, do our hypothesis tests. So if you click on that, you will get this one. You get the survey data, the Math 140 survey data. Okay. Um, all right. So in the one population proportion hypothesis test, uh, we were looking at um, testing the claim that less than 10% of STAT students actually carpool to school. So this, the sample data I'm going to use to test that claim what is this one. What type of transportation do you take to get to school? So um, this is obviously a categorical data set. Notice the data set's made of words, descriptions of people, not it's not numerical measurement data. So um, there's a couple of different ways. A, lot, a good way to sort of analyze the data is in StatKey. I like StatKey a lot. If you click on one categorical variable, since this was a categorical data set, you can actually get some, some good analysis. I'm going to click Edit Data. And I'm going to paste in the data that's in there. Now this is raw data, so I'm going to click Raw Data. Let's see if it yeah, there we go. So we can see it made a bar chart and it also gave me the counts. So I had 332 total students and 30 of them actually um, 30 of them actually carpool and that's about 9 percent, 0.09. So 30 out of 332. That's kind of the count I was looking for to do the hypothesis test. Um, now, if we um, if we wanted to uh, go ahead and um, find the test statistic and all the P all the numbers, we could actually go to StatCato. is kind of a, a traditional program that'll just give you a, sort of a, a uh, just give you all the numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Here's my, by the way, my transportation data right here, but I already know that it's 30 out of 32. By the way, if you wanted to see that in StatCato, a good way to do that would be just to go graph and pie chart. So if you go graph and pie chart, um, it won't give you the total though. It doesn't actually calculate the total, but we already know it was 332 and it says here 30 of them carpool. Again, it's about 9%. So this pie chart's kind of a nice way to some, get some summary counts. 
All right, so um, if I wanted to do in our in our video when we did the one proportion one population proportion hypothesis test, we tested the claim that less than ten percent of COC students COC stat students actually carpool. So if I go to statistics hypothesis test one population proportion just like that. Again, Statcato actually has very nice menus. They're well organized. So you can just go hypothesis test and one population proportion. I'm going to click on that. And do I have the summary counts or do I have raw data? I do have raw data, so I could put the raw data in right here. But I think I'm going to go ahead and use the summary counts. So here's the summary counts. And, um, and uh, let's do that. 30 is the number of events. Total number of trials is like the sample size, so 332. By the way, you do uh, the sample when you do raw categorical data. Sometimes StatCato is a little bit um, tricky because it doesn't really necessarily know which variable you're trying to find the proportion for. This this one had a, a quite a few different answers to how do you get to school. So I, I wanted to focus on the carpool one. So I find it's a little bit um, better if you type in the to in the in the counts yourself. In that problem. In the one proportion, we were doing a, using a 5% significance level, and the hypothesized proportion, remember that's the number in the null and alternative hypothesis, was 10%. So I'm going to type in 0 0.1 there. And then we were testing that it was, the claim, what the alternative hypothesis was that, that it was less than. So I'm going to change the HA, the alternative hypothesis, to less than. So this is again going to do a left tail test. And these are some of the numbers that we kind of calculated by hand in the last video on a one population proportion. Let's take a look. There we go. So there's our null and alternative hypothesis. There's our critical value, negative 1.645. There's our z-score test statistic, negative 0.585. And our p-value of about 0.279. If you notice, those are the same numbers we got uh, in the previous video. So again, it's nice. You can kind of look at it. Again, my left tail starts at the critical value, negative 1.645. The z-test statistic, though, was not in the left tail. It was not um, to the left of negative 1.645 on the number line. It was actually to the right. It was kind of in the middle, which means not significant, right? The sample data does not significantly disagree with the null hypothesis. In other words, this sample proportion, 0 0.09, was only 0.585 standard errors below the population proportion of 10%. Again, that means they're very close. So, again, it's good not to make that judgment until you see the numbers, though. Don't just look at 0.1 and 0 0.09 and think you know in your head that those are close or far away. They could be far away, they could be close. That's why we needed a test statistic. Our p-value was very high. That means that this sample data could be happening just because all samples are a little different. So we could have sampling variability could be involved or random chance. So anyway, this was the this is a good like traditional program that would just give you all the numbers, and that's just a matter of kind of figuring them out. Now I do like um, uh, students to be able to kind of find these numbers uh, with the actual curves. So let's do that. Um, so um, if we go back to stat key, and um, a pro one proportion hypothesis test is actually uh, going to use a, the theoretical distribution for a z-score, which is a, the standard normal distribution. Uh, so if you go under theoretical distributions right here, it says normal. Uh, that's the one where you can actually get the standard normal uh, distribution that goes with z-scores. So we're going to do that. Now we were doing a left-tailed test right, with a 5% significance level. So I click left tail and 0 0.05 significance level. And if you notice, there's the critical value. right? Remember the critical value is where the tail starts. It's corresponding to the significance level here. And there's our critical value that StatCato gave us. But this is a nice picture. I can also see that negative 0.585, my test statistic, is over here, right? It's not in the, in the tail. So these, these, these pictures are really, really good just to kind of have an idea. Now, what would be the p-value? 
Well, remember, this is not a p-value. That's the significance level because this is the tail. What I, what I want to know is the, the probability corresponding to the test statistic. So what I'm going to do now is put the negative 0.585 in this bottom box right here. So negative 0 0.585 Right, like that, there's my test statistic. And now the probability in the tail corresponding to the test statistic is the estimate of the p-value. So in our case, this is 0.279. Notice it's the same number that Staccato gave us. Okay, so these are really good for just kind of getting a picture and using, um, I like my students to be able to use StatKey and Staccato um, just because so, both give them, give them different things. All right, now what if I wanted to um, not use the traditional z-score curve? What if I wanted to use randomized simulation to do this test? Let's take a look at what that would look like. So a randomized simulation test or a randomization hypothesis test like assumes that the null hypothesis is true and then has the computer create simulated samples based on the premise that the null hypothesis was true. So in other words, it doesn't really need a test statistic and it doesn't need the curve. Um, those, were the, those were the traditional approaches before computers were invented. Um, those methods were used. But in a randomized hypothesis test is more modern. And we're looking at a test for a single proportion. So right here, test for single proportion. Now all I'm going to do now, I want to change the null hypothesis to what ours was in this problem about carpooling. We said it was, the null hypothesis was 0 0.1 and we're going to be testing the claim that it's less than 0 0.1. Under edit data, you can put in the counts. Remember our counts was we had 30 students that carpooled out of a total of 332. Everybody see that okay? So here's our, here's our sample proportion right here, 0 0.090, and um, this is our null hypothesis. Now in randomized simulation, they're going to basically uh, create thousands of random samples under the premise that the population percentage really is 10%. So in other words, what would we be likely to see by sampling variability if the null was true? So what I'll do is I'll just generate a few thousand samples. Just like that. And this is sort of kind of if you can kind of